The first method that we'll discuss is, uh, and this method is uh, one of three methods that can be used for preparing salt. And the first method is, is called excess method. And it would be used when one of the reactants, uh, one of the reactants is going to be insoluble. So, so it's only going to be used when of one of your reactants is insoluble. Now, uh, you have many different equations. We just discussed that there are five different acid-base equations that we did when we were doing acid-base reactions. So let's think of an equation where one of the reactants is insoluble. And you had a, a table which told you which substances are soluble and which ones are insoluble. You can uh, go and refer to the to the IGCSE and O-Levels revision sheet that I have posted on the website. And you can download that and you can see... Uh, which reactants are insoluble and which ones are soluble. Now, I'm I'm going to think of an equation. Let's say I have calcium carbonate. Now, all carbonates are insoluble except group one and group uh, group one and NH four plus one carbonates. Now, this is a group two carbonate, so it's insoluble. It's going to be a solid. Now, calcium carbonate is the chalk that you use every day. It's called limestone. It's chalk or marble pieces of marble or chalk. That's calcium carbonate. So it doesn't dissolve, it's going to remain a solid. So if you put it in solution, it's, it's not going to dissolve unless it reacts with the solution. Now I'm going to react a carbonate with an acid and let's uh, think of uh, nitric acid, HNO3. Now all acids are soluble, they are going to form solutions. So nitric acid is going to be in the form of a solution and the salt that's going to be produced in this particular reaction that salt is, you get rid of the H in the acid and put a metal over there. So it's going to be calcium nitrate. So get rid of the H, that's how you produce the salt. Instead of H, replace it with a metal. Now NO3 is minus 1, Ca is 2 plus. So they would be, if you use the crisscross method, there would be two nitrate ions. Now that's calcium nitrate, the formula of calcium nitrate. And the other things that are produced with it are, they are H2O and carbon dioxide now remember carbon dioxide is a gas so it's going to escape the beaker or wherever you're doing the reaction h2o is a liquid and calcium nitrates all nitrates are soluble so referring to the solubility again all nitrates are soluble so this substance is going to be soluble it's going to form a solution it's going to become part of the solution now how do i do this reaction in 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 my laboratory now the first thing I would need is, uh, I would need a beaker. So let's take a large beaker. So that's my beaker. And this is the beaker I'm going to use for this particular reaction. Now, uh, Remember one thing uh, that nitric acid, now remember one thing nitric acid is going to be a solution. So this nitric acid over here, it's going to be in the form of a solution. So I'll fill the beaker up with nitric acid, which is uh, HNO3. So it's going to be HNO3 in aqua state. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put pieces of uh, calcium carbonate, which is a solid, which I already told you that it's in the form of chalk or or marble or crushed marble, um, limestone, it's called. So calcium carbonate, I'll put, I'll put tiny pieces of calcium carbonate. Uh, the reason I'm going to use tiny pieces or small pieces all in powdered form is that uh, to increase the surface area so that a faster reaction occurs. Now I've put I've put calcium carbonate, these lumps of calcium carbonate, into the acid. So these are solid lumps of calcium carbonate, and immediately these two things are going to they're going to start reacting with each other, and they're, they're going to start producing uh, these products. These are my products over here. So it's going to start they're going to start producing these products. Uh, the first thing that you'll see or observe is this thing over here, carbon dioxide bubbles would be seen. So you'll start seeing, you'll start, you'll start seeing bubbles of carbon dioxide gas forming. Uh, and these carbon dioxide gas bubbles would escape into the air. So carbon dioxide escapes into the air. Uh, the next thing that you'll, uh, you'll probably not observe is the formation of H2O liquid. As soon as H2O liquid is formed, 
it's going to become part of the solution so you wouldn't you wouldn't um, you would not be able to observe this or the formation of calcium nitrate is also good aqueous it's a soluble salt so it's going to be become part of the solution as well so calcium nitrate and h2o they would immediately become part of the solution because they're in aqueous state so they would uh, it's a soluble salt it's going to immediately become part of the solution it's a colorless salt so you would probably not observe anything you wouldn't see h2o liquid or calcium nitrate forming now um, what we need to do in this reaction is we want we what we basically wanted was we wanted this salt over here and we wanted pure uh, dry crystals of this particular salt now i've told you how how this reaction is going to occur now we're going to discuss the in detail what um, problems might occur when we do this reaction in the college laboratory now the problem that we are going to face is uh, that if you look at the equation uh, the equation sh shows that one molecule of uh, calcium carbonate is going to react with two molecules of uh, nitric acid now the problem that we are going to face in the college laboratory is that when we add calcium carbonate and when we add nitric acid now it's very hard to actually uh, count the number of moles or molecules of calcium carbonate and nitric acid so you won't be sure how much nitric acid and how much calcium carbonate you're adding into the solution uh, because it's impossible to actually count uh, calcium carbonate and nitric acid you can uh, you can use uh, stoichiometry but uh, that would not be very exact because uh, substances are impure so even if you uh, measure the correct amount or the correct mass of calcium carbonate even then the substance might not be very pure and you would end up uh, adding a little less of calcium carbonate or a little more of calcium carbonate so the problem that you're going to face is that when you mix nitric acid and calcium carbonate one of the reactant would be in excess for example you might end up adding too much nitric acid now calcium carbonate is going to react with nitric acid these two are your reactants and the products that are going to be produced are carbon dioxide uh, calcium nitrate and water now that's those are your products now if you add too much nitric acid then what's going to happen is that all of the calcium carbonate is going to be it's going to be used up all of the marble chips or the chalk that you're using it's going to dissolve in the nitric acid you've added too much of nitric acid so all of your calcium carbonate is going to react and it's going to be converted into calcium nitrate plus water and carbon dioxide but what happens to the nitric acid uh, if you add it in excess then some of it some of it is going to remain uh, unreacted some of it would remain it remains unreacted and the problem would be that the salt that is produced which is uh, in this case calcium nitrate now that salt would be contaminated by nitric acid with the leftover nitric acid and since nitric acid is in aqua state it's part of the solution and calcium nitrate is in aqua state it's also going to become part of the solution it's also soluble so there would be uh, it would be impossible to remove this nitric acid from the salt or the product that you have produced because uh, we are looking for calcium nitrate you want pure calcium nitrate so it's impossible to actually actually uh, uh, remove all the nitric acid if you add too much of uh, nitric acid on the other hand what could happen uh, is you might add it, you might end up adding too much calcium carbonate that's the opposite case you're adding nitric acid and reacting with calcium carbonate so in the lab you might end up reacting or putting too much calcium carbonate so calcium carbonate might be in excess and there would be too little nitric acid now in this case all the nitric acid would get used up so nitric acid when the reaction completes and these two react and carbon dioxide and calcium nitrate and h2o is produced all the nitric acid would end up uh, being used up and calcium carbonate because you've added too much of it you've added too much uh, marble chips or chalks in chalk into this uh, nitric acid solution which uh, uh, ends up using all all of the nitric acid so the remaining calcium carbonate um, would be left over at the end so you would have these solid pieces being uh, uh, being in the solution but they would be unreacted because all the nitric acid got used up so unreacted 
calcium carbonate would remain at the end so not all of it is going to be used up and remember calcium carbonate these are solid pieces it's a, it's an insoluble compound so it won't dissolve so there would be uh, chunks of calcium carbonate remaining at the bottom now if you add too much calcium carbonate if you add calcium carbonate in excess now one advantage of doing that is that you got rid of all the nitric acid so the solution has no nitric acid so all of the nitric acid is removed so all HNO3 is used up and what about the calcium carbonate that is unreacted the pieces of calcium carbonate remaining at the end of the reaction what you can do is because they are solid pieces you can filter them out so these uh, the remaining uh, residue of calcium carbonate or the pieces of calcium carbonate they are going to be they're going to be filtered out So you can get rid of the calcium carbonate, which is in excess, by simply filtering these these pieces out. You can filter them out. So the, so the calcium carbonate that was left unused at the end of the reaction, that could be removed. Now what's remaining at the end of the reaction? You've gotten rid of all your reactants. The nitric acid got used up and the remaining calcium carbonate that you added in excess, that you added too much of, you can easily remove that by filtration and the final product that remains at the end of the reaction is going to be your salt the solution is only going to contain your salt so if you were if you were interesting in interested in making salt this is the best method if you add calcium carbonate in excess the nitric acid all of it gets used up and the remaining calcium carbonate pieces are removed by filtration and the solution only contains your product which is the salt so this if you want pure calcium nitrate then this is the method that you're going to use you're going to use what you're going to put one of the reactants in, in excess which in this case is going to be calcium carbonate and uh, cal the unused calcium carbonate is removed by filtration the nitric acid is completely used up and the solution only contains pure calcium nitrate mixed with water and you can then crystallize this solution so you can you can crystallize this solution to get pure crystals of calcium nitrate now we're going to discuss how we're going to write this when this question comes in your exam now the first thing that you're going to uh, state is your point number one is going to be that you're going to tell that calcium carbonate would be the one that would be in excess so you're going to write that you're going to add excess calcium carbonate solid into nitric acid into nitric acid so that is your first point that you're going to state when you're answering this question in your exam and uh, how would you know that you've added excess calcium carbonate the way you're going to know that you've added excess calcium carbonate is once you've added excess calcium carbonate all the nitric acid you're going to ensure that all the nitric acid gets used up you're going to keep on adding calcium carbonate until all the nitric acid is used up and one indication that nitric acid has been used up is that there would be no effervescence carbon dioxide gas uh, would not be produced once all the nitric acid has been used up so you're going to keep adding you're going to keep you're going to keep adding CaCO3 until no more effervescence is seen because all the nitric acid gets used up so since there is no nitric acid so no carbon dioxide gas would be produced once calcium carbonate is in excess so keep adding calcium carbonate until no more effervescence is seen so that's your second point uh, related to um, uh, how would you going to figure out that calcium carbonate is in excess. Now, the next thing that you're going to describe is that once you've added calcium carbonate in excess, you're going to filter this calcium carbonate out. So you're going to do filtration and you're going to filter this calcium carbonate out. So, 
so filter out excess calcium carbonate that you added and that is thrown away and the next thing is you have this your solution only contains this salt over here which is calcium nitrate but it's a solution of calcium nitrate so what you're going to do is you're going to describe the process of crystallization so you're going to describe the process of crystallization and uh, what you're going to describe is that you evaporate the remaining uh, or not the remaining you're going to evaporate the filtrate so you're going to evaporate the filtrate to saturation point saturation point so that the solution becomes so concentrated that the particles they get together and start forming crystals so evaporate the filtrate to saturation point you cool gradually and filter out the crystals that are formed so filter out crystals which are formed and you need the question generally when you whenever you get this question in your exam paper they are they're asking for dry crystals so the way you're going to dry them is you're either going to keep them in sunlight or you're going to you're going to put them in filter papers filter paper is going to absorb all the excess moisture so if you filter out the crystals formed and you dry them between pieces of filter paper between pieces of filter paper to get pure dry crystals now this last step drying part you can do this in an oven as well but some crystals would decompose when you heat them in an oven uh, what else you can do is you can put them in sunlight as well so there are many different options that you could use so so the last process involves crystallization so you have to describe the process of crystallization in detail you don't you're not going to miss any points when you're describing this process so that is your excess method and that is how you're going to answer the question when it comes in your exam we are now going to do another example of excess method and uh, in this uh, it's a, it's a, it's again it's going to be exactly the same like the method that we just did for calcium carbonate so in this reaction i'm reacting magnesium with hcl hydrochloric acid and it's producing a salt and hydrogen gas so it's a reaction in which a metal reacts with an acid produces salt and h2 so magnesium is a metal and remember one thing whenever you're using metals to produce a salt uh, remember this word mazet because not all metals react in the same way some react explosively so you can't do those reactions in the lab and most of the time your questions are going to be about preparing a salt safely in the lab so so you won't be able to uh, react very reactive metals with uh, acids because their reactions would be explosive like sodium or potassium their reactions are going to be explosive whereas other metals uh, like silver gold etc are very low in the reactivity series and their reactions would be very very slow so they would take it would take uh, it would be it would either take a very long time or that the reactions would be non-existent so mazet is the term that you could use is an acronym that you can use m stands for magnesium a is for aluminium z is for zinc i is for iron and t is for tin so these metals only react in a normal way with acids so you can carry out reactions with these metals when you're preparing salts so now we're going to use the excess method and the reason we're going to use the excess method is one of the reactants in our case is is insoluble so we have an insoluble reactant and our salt that is produced is a soluble salt so whenever you're producing a soluble salt with an insoluble reactant you're going to use excess method so when you do this reaction in the lab what's going to happen is you're going to take a beaker 
So here's your beaker and uh, what you're going to do next is uh, you're going to take pieces, chunks of magnesium or small, they come in small strips. So you're going to take these magnesium metal strips and these are put in hydrochloric acid. So hydrochloric acid is HCl. So these are put in hydrochloric acid, which is HCl aqueous. And these are my magnesium, solid magnesium strips. And as soon as you mix these two up, uh, you'll start seeing bubbles of hydrogen gas being produced. So bubbles of hydrogen gas would start would be produced. So these are my this, this is my hydrogen gas that would be produced, and uh, I'll also see. So this is hydrogen gas which would be given off, and the product which is MgCl two, the salt in our case, that would be formed in the solution. It's a it's an aqueous salt, so MgCl two. would become part of the solution as soon as you, you wouldn't be able to see MgCl2 being produced because it's a soluble colorless salt. So as soon as it is produced, it's going to be part of the solution. So it's going to mix. The, these red dots are magnesium chloride. So they're going to mix in the solution. Now, uh, which reactant would be in excess? I have two reactants. One is magnesium and the other one is hydrochloric acid. So remember to put the insoluble reactant in excess. So this is put in excess. So I'm going to add a lot of magnesium and I'm going to keep on adding magnesium and the indication that magnesium solid is in excess is that the bubbles would stop producing because once magnesium is in excess, then all the hydrochloric acid is going to eventually react. And once that is finished, then the magnesium has nothing to react with. So hydrogen gas would stop uh, producing there would be no there would be no more bubbles of hydrogen gas seen so magnesium solid is, is in excess so once you put magnesium solid in excess your HCl is gone all of it reacts it gets converted into MgCl2 and H2 and how do you get rid of the excess magnesium solid you filter it out so you filter out the excess magnesium uh, which you you've added and now your solution only contains MgCl2 aqueous which is then crystallized so how are you going to explain this in your exam? The first point is going to be, you're going to add excess Mg solid uh, to HCl aqueous. And the indication that it's an excess is that the bubbles would stop producing. So keep adding until no more effervescence is seen. So keep adding Mg until no more effervescence is seen. The second point would be you filter out the excess Mg, filter out excess mg solid which has been added you remove it once you've added in added mg solid in excess and finally you're going to crystallize the filtrate so so evaporate so evaporate the remaining solution to crystallization point solution to crystallization point or saturation point then you cool gradually and filter out the crystals formed so you cool gradually and you filter out the crystals formed 
and dry those crystals between filter papers. Dry crystals between filter papers. So these are your three steps that you're going to take. Um, uh, you have to describe crystallization in detail. So this part over here is all about crystallization. So this third point is all about describing the process of crystallization. So you have to describe the process of crystallization. Crystallization in detail uh, the first two so this is exactly the same as the previous example that we did so there's nothing different ex different except that the reactants are different so whenever you have whenever you have a soluble salt you want to make a soluble salt and your reactant is an insoluble substance so you're going to use excess method 